Hey everybody, welcome back. So we're taking a little trip back in time today. And Charlie, my seven foot bow constrictor imperator here, is going to help us. So what is the biggest snake? What's the biggest snake that's ever lived? It's actually pretty scary. So we are going to take a look at Titanoboa today. How they found it, how big it was, and can there be any more of them? Today on Intrepid Exotics. Whether you're a lifelong keeper or just getting started, help us encourage responsible keeping, conservation, and public education in the interest of keeping our reptiles safe and healthy as we protect them for future generations. You're invited to spend time with us as we experience these awesome animals together on Intrepid Exotics. So for as long as I can remember, people have always been fascinated with giant snakes and wanting to find the biggest one. And there's always rumors of people finding these 30, 40 foot snakes down the Amazon. And of course, those people disappearing and nobody hearing from them again. You know, even back as early as like 1912, Theodore Roosevelt went through the Bronx Zoo and was offering a thousand dollar reward for anybody that could bring him a specimen of snake that was over 30 feet long. So we've always been amazed by these. And you'll see pictures of this reticulated python right here, who's presumed to be the largest in captivity at 25 feet. And I know some of you are probably familiar with the picture of this green anaconda, which is the second longest and typically the first heaviest snake on the planet that can reach upwards of three, 400 pounds. Uh, these animals just get extremely massive and they're, they're really impressive to see. So what would happen if we all went on an expedition out into the jungle and our expectation is to see maybe a 16, 18 foot anaconda, maybe weighing a couple hundred pounds. And you just see the water starting to shift and all of a sudden you see this massive head that's about 20 inches long come up out of the water and it's attached to a 48 foot snake that weighs a better part of 1,500 pounds. Well, that is what they found out in Colombia in South America. So the story for finding this snake starts in 2004 when some archeologists were digging in the Cerion coal mines down in Colombia and started to find a lot of vegetation, a lot of leaves, a lot of fossils of some old vegetation from a period about 60 million years ago. So they had found a lot of bone fossils too from like turtles and crocodilians and so forth. So they collected up all of these fossils, sent them up to the University of Florida uh, so they could be examined there. And there was a grad student there at the University of Florida named Alex Hastings, who as he was going through these, found one vertebrae that didn't quite line up with the other one. So he called in another reptile expert, come to find out this other vertebrae was actually from a snake. So based on this one vertebrae, after about a year of examining it, measuring it, comparing it to existing snakes, trying to figure out what species it was, trying to figure out where on that skeleton that vertebrae actually came from, um, they finally determined that it was a boid or a boa and they placed that vertebrae right about at the thickest part of the animal. Now it's going to make a difference as to whether that's in the middle of the animal or in the neck or in the tail because they're all going to be different sizes and those sizes are going to kind of determine how big they are. But after about a year they finally got that placed and from there they was able to extrapolate what the rest of this animal looked like. And they actually were able to model it and I believe that model is in the Smithsonian right now but it was just a massive animal. just utterly breathtaking. I couldn't imagine walking up and seeing a 48 foot snake that weighs 1500 pounds out in the backyard. The thing was a monster. And the specimen that they ended up using as comparison was a vertebrae off of a 17 foot anaconda. And just by comparing the size of just these vertebrae you could tell that this animal was just absolutely massive. And they did a really awesome job of recreating this for the display. Um, definitely something that I want to get out to sometime. And the question always comes up, you know, how did they get so big? Well, the general consensus with the researchers is that due to a lot higher temperature on the earth, a lot higher, warmer climate at the time, the, you know, the snakes were, since they're cold blooded, 
and they, they're dependent on their environment for heat to run their metabolism, the warmer it is, the more access they've got to that energy, the larger they can grow. So it was substantially hotter 60 million years ago than it is today around that region of the world. So that's presumed how they got that big. And that really kind of ties in too with what we're looking at today. People are like, well, what's the biggest snake that's alive today? Well, depending on how our climate changes, if our climate continues to rise, and it rises high enough, there's a likelihood that maybe our anacondas um, will take advantage of that heat and start getting longer and larger, and you never know. Now, it's presumed that at the time, Titanoboa was the largest animal in the ecosystem, hands down. They had found some fossils of crocodilians that had gotten pretty large, around a 40-foot mark, but they still didn't quite reach the size of the Titanoboas. And the only other snake in the record that came close to it was Gigantophis, which came in at about 33 feet. But just as a point of reference, you know, 48 foot is the length of your typical semi-trailer. Not with the cab, not with the tractor as well, but just the trailer. Typically about 48 feet. So the next time you see one of those going down the road, just imagine a snake that would be sticking out either end of that, weighing about 1,500 pounds coming after you out in the middle of the woods. Now, even for somebody like me who really loves working with giant snakes, uh, man, that would, be, that would be really humbling to find one that was literally three feet in diameter and over half a ton that ate meals of five and 600 pounds at a time. Uh, just amazing animals. So thought you guys might like to see a little bit about that. I know one of these days I'm definitely gonna get up to the Smithsonian so that I can see that model. And even just seeing the model of it and being there, I think would be really awesome. So for those of you that wanna learn what it's like working with and handling some of our existing snakes that are living today, I've got the first video in the Reticulated Python series that I'm gonna link at the end screen for you. Go check that out and we will see you next time on Intrepid Exotics.